Hello. To talk further about geometric measure theory, we must make a distinction between what Kevin calls two main branches of geometric measure theory. In this beautiful article by Kevin Vixie, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, he mentions that there is the variational problem side of geometric measure theory, where you talk about minimal surfaces, plateau problem, basically calculus of variations. So here is where currents, varifolds come in. The second aspect focuses on geometry of sets and measures. Um, that would be talking about rectifiability, densities, tangent spaces, projection theorems, and stuff like that. And uh, there is a lot of harmonic, harmonic measures and harmonic analysis used in such studies. He, for example, mentions that Morgan and Federer's books come from this branch, while Matilla's textbook is uh, a representative of the second branch. So I put a link to this beautiful article by Kevin Vixie, uh, who has also many other interesting articles on the topic. So I can give you samples of things written on geometric measure theory. And by looking at them, you can see that this dichotomy is, uh, is visible there. For example, in these notes, you can see that they talk about sets of finite perimeter, rectifiable and integral currents. So they talk about currents and not sets. Uh, there is plateau problem and then regularity results. Once you find a minimal surface, a minimizer for some energy, you want to know how close it is to being an honest manifold. So those are kind of questions in this calculus of variation aspect of geometric measure theory. On the other hand, looking at this course given by Katrin Fussler, you can see immediately that Matilla is the main reference. So it's all about sets and measures. It's all about rectifiability, density, Frostman measures, um, projection theorems, Fourier transform, uh, pure unrectifiability, Vescovich's projection theorems and other stuff. So by the way, Katrin has many beautiful publications um, on, on similar uh, topics pretty recently, but uh, we will talk about more recent work on um, geometric measure theory in future videos. Uh, I also came across this beautiful uh, web page by Monica Torres. Uh, in this course, the lecture notes have been uploaded here. Uh, again, we can tell that this uh, goes towards theory of currents and calculus of variations after a uh, basic discussion of rectifiability. Well, these come also come up in the in the other aspect of the theory. They are they are kind of central to both aspects of the theory of geometric measure theory. Um, sets of finite perimeter, there's compactness for such sets, the query and area formulas that we have actually covered, as perimetric inequality boundary uh, and reduced boundary of sets of finite perimeter. You see that Federer's uh, name comes up. So, De Georgi's structure theorem, and then uh, we begin talking about area functional minimal surfaces. So we see that we we wandered into that world: regularity of local parameter minimizers, and then uh, high regularity analysis, singularities, and so on. So there is no discussion of projections, densities, tangent spaces. And stuff like that. So we see this is um, on the calculus of variation side. A um, uh, very quite recent uh, work has been uh, put on archive by Matilla. And uh, as we mentioned, Matilla's book focuses on geometry of sets and measures. This note um, is a great way to see what's going on 
recently in geometric measure theory and particularly in this aspect of geometric measure theory, there is a lot of discussions of newer results, conjectures, uh, partial successes, and uh, at the same time, there is also given background and history and context. So this is a beautiful uh, piece of work to look at if you want to familiarize yourself with serious, up-to-date and uh, current research in geometric measure theory. As you can see, well, Hustorf measure, central subjects, rectifiability, it begins on chapter three with just one dimensional case. Uh, we have done a full playlist on Lipschitz maps from R1 or intervals into general metric spaces. So this should be familiar to you, although we haven't talked about stuff like projections and densities. Um, so uniform rectifiability is kind of a, a very hot topic and more recent. Um, so rectifiability of sets in metric spaces, this is also something that started after 1994 with work of Kirchheim. Uh, Heisenberg group and Carnot groups are really interesting spaces for all people in analysis and geometric measure theory. We have three videos on Heisenberg group. Just for definitions, you can refer to them. So singular integrals, this brings in harmonic analysis into the study of sets. But also in the last chapter, there is uh, some talk about currents and barifolds and minimizers and uh, regularity of those stuff. So um, I will also remind you that we had a video that went over the most well-known textbooks in geometric measure theory. Um, for every book, we talked about when it was published, the number of pages, and then also this part, which is what the book focuses on. And from this, you can always decide if it is a book about geometry of sets or a book in calculus of variations. Um, so focuses on rectifiable sets, then variables and currents. You see that this Simon's book probably is in calculus variation. Uh, structure of sets. So Falconer's book, definitely the title says the geometry of fractal sets. So it's not concerned necessarily with, with a plateau problem type of things. So I'll put a link to this one as well in the description of this video. So what is the plan ahead? Uh, for the young measures. So I decided that, well, these are really deep subjects and difficult to um, cover in any one semester course, let alone in uh, 10 videos on YouTube or anything. So to be practical and of use, so I've decided that we will continue with uh, lots of examples because after all, examples bring life to general theory. We have already started it. So we've done a lot of 1D uh, counter sets. We saw that we can find counter sets of arbitrary cost of dimension between zero and one, including zero and one itself. Um, the one dimensional theory maybe is not that interesting, but as soon as we talk about, uh, so one dimensional, subsets of our two things become really interesting. And actually that is how the whole theory started when Besikovic investigated this problem and got some already deep results about what, how can we tell a one dimensional subset of a plane, what properties it has. And uh, so we, we, we can build a lot of such examples. We can talk about, uh, again, counter sets, about other constructions. And then we we can mention some um, properties of them. So before getting into the theory or presenting you with theorems and proving anything, we can give examples and then through examples motivate uh, some of the deeper theorems. 
for example, we can talk about a specific counter set, say the four corner counter set constructed by uh, retaining only the corners and then repeating similarly and so on. And uh, we can we can talk about some weird properties of this set under projections on two lines. So if you project this set onto this line, what happens? What do you see in this line? Do you see a set of positive Lebesgue measure or maybe a null? And and we are more and more examples we can grow some intuition or for, for the type of results that we, we can expect. And even like we can um, think about conjectures and good questions. So that is that will be the plan, immediate plan going forward. Um, following these examples, uh, the more natural choice would be to continue with the study of geometry of sets aspect of geometric measure theory. So we can talk about rectifiability and then characterizations of rectifiability through density, through approximate tangent spaces, we can talk about projections, as I illustrated in this picture, and so on. Uh, so for now, we're not going to enter the world of calculus of variations. Apologies to the re to the follower who had asked for variables, so that's not coming up this soon, at least on this channel. Um, so that's kind of the plan. And the type of videos you can expect, uh, but uh, but these this works a, needs a lot of work planning out and finding good good stuff. I don't want to just do something because I, for the sake of covering a topic, want to do a good job and presenting you with valuable material. So I'm planning these out, writing notes for myself. Meanwhile, I I can also um, do do some other types of videos that you will. We'll see. I want to end with uh, introducing uh, a beautiful channel uh, from Jonas Azam. As uh, so you can see that there is, let me get rid of these. So there is a playlist, only one playlist on geometric measure theory with 51 videos. And uh, if you if you browse through these videos, you will immediately see that um, the things covered here are not uh, piece of cake stuff. So these are really deep um, and complicated theorems of geometric measure theory. He proves some stuff. He does not prove others. Uh, but but all in all, these are great videos. I really recommend them. Um, so the, the the way we approach the topic will be a little less um, ambitious, let's say, and uh, more kind of user friendly. So we don't want to go too fast. Uh, you see that he's got this five R covering, Vitaly covering lemma that we had previously. Okay, and then in the first video. He gives the basics of measure theory. One of the questions that um, I'm right now wondering about is how how little could someone know about measure theory and be able to handle the course in geometric measure theory? Um, and that is important because we may need to spend one or two videos on, on some uh, elementary measure theory, but elementary at the same time, not covered necessarily in every measure theory course. Some measure theory courses are just too abstract and do not um, specifically point out things that are kind of interesting in the Euclidean setting. Okay, until next videos, um, have a good one and see you.